632 cubic inches. That's 10.3 liters. Can we make sure? <laughs> you so it's 10.1526. Yeah. Yeah. So new year, new us, and we actually finished cars. What better way to show them off than bringing back an old show, Build Biology. So to kick off the season, we're gonna start off with one of our finished builds, our big block Camaro. This actually started not with the car, but with the engine. Chevrolet Performance had a brand new crate engine that was coming out and they said, hey, can you put that into something? And this is the something, not, not Alex, the car. This is a 632 cubic inch big block. It's a crate engine, which means you open the box, you put it in your car, and then it makes a thousand horsepower. Alex and I built this whole car in three weeks leading up to SEMA. You might think, oh, that's an easy task, right? You put a big block into a third gen. That was no easy task. And you know what? We didn't even have the engine until a week after after we started. This is true, we, we had a mock-up engine. It had plastic heads, it had a plastic intake manifold. It had its manifold, it had its intake, but it, yeah, it was a basically a stock big block engine cast iron, it had 3D printed heads, pretty cool. And it was exactly, it was basically exactly this, without headers. So we were able to put the engine in, install it, get the transmission bolted up to it, and get everything sorted out so that when we finally did get our 632, we could just plop it in there plug everything up, plumb it, wire it, and... That was it. Well, we, we, there was a lot more to that. We had to make custom <laughs> headers. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of little details, of course. We'll go into that. Yeah, no shit. Basically, the big block originated 59 years ago. The big block, originally. Daytona 500, 1963. That's the first time you've ever seen a big block. That was a 427 cubic inch big block. The first time a customer a normal person could get their hands on a big block was 1965. That was a 396 cubic inch big block producing 325 horsepower. So over the years, the technology has vastly improved, mostly because of the heads. And that what makes this engine special, these heads. Six thirty-two cubic inch, six hundred and thirty-two cubic inch. What does that mean? That means ten point three liters of displacement. What does that mean? Ten point three liters. You take five soda bottles, the two-liter ones, lay them out. That's how much displacement this motor has. And that's a big boy. Yeah, it is. That is a big boy, and that's why it can make a thousand horsepower whoa, whoa, naturally I, aspirated. Thousand horsepower naturally aspirated. There's no nitrous on it. There's no turbo on it. It just sucks in its own air and makes its own horsepower. <laughs> Yeah, and thanks to these big heads yeah. that they develop, it allows the engine to pull in a lot of air from the outside through the air filter, through the intake, straight into the engine. Boom, exhaust comes out the back and you make a thousand horsepower. So, one of the big differences, old school big block and, and, and the new tech, is it's fuel injected. This uh, is 100% fuel injected. So it, it looks like a spider manifold with that should have a carburetor on it but you can see on the side right here, those are injectors, port injected. That is a sequential fire port injected V8. What does that mean? It means each cylinder fires individually, saves gas. That's not really why we're here, but no. yeah, it saves a little bit of gas and it makes it way more efficient. And it's easy too, because you got a computer controlling everything. Yeah. You don't have to make any adjustments to old school carburetors. Yeah, there's no screwdrivers here. This is all laptops. That's right, that's how we like it. So the engine comes as a crate. It doesn't come with accessories. We did our own accessory drive. We did a water pump that was originally designed for a trophy truck. And we also did the same 
set up with the alternator, also designed originally for a trophy truck. Those things go through a lot of abuse. To round it all off, we shaved the engine bay completely. And that means is we filled a bunch of holes. We made plates, we cut out the original battery trays, all that, patched that up with some custom plates. You can actually see it's got some nice cutouts on there. But you know what, Super, you, you passed something pretty big here. What do we We pack? got a friggin' radiator that holds oh. five gallons of water. Yeah. Because these guys are gonna do burnouts all day. Yeah. And we don't want this thing to overheat. I think it came out of like some sort of sprint car or whatnot. Yeah, it's it basically holds. something you get like out of a NASCAR. Yeah, it's, it's huge. Ra Raiders out of like a NASCAR style car. It's huge. It literally holds five gallons of water by itself. And I don't know if you guys know, we kind of abuse our stuff here. <laughs> So yeah. you want to explain to them the driving styles of Hoonigan? I don't think those guys know how cars work, because if they did, then they would know not to do certain things. But uh, this car's been beefed up to handle all that abuse. We got Eugene. We got this dumb guy. He's called Ron. He just trashes cars. They're going to be sitting on burnouts, rev limiters for days. So that's why we got our crazy cooling system. We beefed up this thing with a four-speed Dog box. Yes. Jericho dog box. We, we also did the yep. rear end. We'll yep, get we did that. the rear end. The whole drivetrain's been beefed up. Clutch, transmission, rear end, drive shaft. It can all handle the abuse that these guys are gonna put on it because they're, they're animals. They're actually animals. So we're building cars with a thousand horsepower now. So it's not simply just put a big motor into a car. Everything else has to be good, right? Yeah, that's right. You gotta upgrade everything. So you have a ton of horsepower, you have to upgrade transmission, clutch, drive shaft, and the rear end. Because the second you get on that power, you're gonna shock the system and you can break any one piece. You're gonna have a yeah. weak link and then that's that's the end of your day. You're, you're gonna yeah, that's it. So the engine goes into a four-speed Jericho transmission, which we have a custom-made twin-disc clutch in there. It drives really good, right? It does. It's a it's twin disc clutch. very streetable. That goes into our big old drive shaft, which goes into a 12-bolt rear with bigger axles in it. So what we ended up doing, because it was crunch time, nobody had a bolt-on application for us. So we called up our friends over at Moser, and they built us a rear end. But they built us a rear end with no mounting tabs, because we told them we, we wanted to redesign the suspension point. Because one of the biggest things with the Camaro is they're really hard to lower because they have a gas tank in the way. The rear mm -hmm. suspension was kind of wonky. In the 80s, it was great. But 1,000 horsepower, we want it low. We want big tires on it. So we had to kind of manipulate the rear a little bit. Yeah, that's right. Lowering a car with solid rear axle like this is a little more challenging than lowering a car with independent rear suspension. And of course, we got our rear end with no mounting points. So that gives us another reason to redesign the suspension. Because originally, the third gen Camaro came with a torque arm setup, which means that you have an arm that goes from the pinion of the rear end all the way to the transmission mount. And that's what controls your pinion angle. So we didn't have that. We didn't have any of those mounting provisions because we basically started from scratch. Mm -hmm. So what we did, we got our rear end with no mounts. We made custom mounts. We redesigned the entire rear suspension system. So we cut out the torque arm and we went to a four-link suspension system. All within three weeks. All within three weeks. We designed a four-link system for this car that originally had a torque arm. So that was no small feat, but we made it happen. It works pretty well. This gives us a lot of advantages though over a torque arm. We get a ton of adjustability and it's basically the ideal suspension system for a drag car, which let's be honest, this is really, with a big block with a thousand horsepower, this is really a drag car. Now knowing that the drivetrain is capable of a thousand horsepower, now we had to reinforce the body. We didn't want like a whole crazy cage in this thing because we kind of wanted like a street car, right? Yeah. So yeah. underneath the car, there's a whole bunch of bracing that we did. There's subframe connectors that we built. There's a bar that runs across. Just a whole bunch of chassis stiffeners. We also wanted to stop very well. All the brakes are upgraded. This car actually came with four wheel discs. The third gens actually did come. They all with came four with four wheel. Oh, discs. you had one. I had one. I built two of them. One of them was very awful. No, it was not awful. It was the best car ever. No, it's not. Now we have the horsepower, we have traction, our chassis is not gonna flex. We still have to stop. So to do that, we put six piston bare brakes in the front and rear, and they're both 13 inch rotors, front and rear.
So the elephant in the room is the body kit, right? Why haven't we talked about the one-off body kit that Chevy Design and Hoonigan collabed together to build? And then, as soon as Chevy Design Center gave us the math for it, we gave it to Street Fighter LA, and this is 3D printed. Why did we 3D print? Well, the only way to build a complete body kit from scratch in three weeks is to 3D print. There was no way we are gonna lay fiberglass and make molds right off the bat. So this was our only option at the time. We have a little bit of time now before we go out and do any high speed anything with this car. We're gonna have it molded and eventually turn this body kit into a full carbon fiber body kit. So another great thing was the livery. It is such a great piece where there's a lot of hidden gems in it, like this. <laughs> this black part from far away looks like just a black sticker, but it's not. It, it actually has the Hoonigan C-Bar logo in there, just scattered all over the place. This right here, it's actually a mix between the Hoonigan name and a print ad for the Z28. The design team over at Chevy also designed us a badge. Custom front emblem. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's super cool because it we had a CNC cut out of aluminum and then we painted yeah, it. Yeah, that thing ain't a sticker. No, okay, it's, <laughs> it's like four pieces. It took some work to put together. Okay, yeah. can you appreciate that please? It was beautiful. It's a nice piece of machinery. There you go. So to round it all off, we have wheels. Yes, we do. We have some custom American Racing D window wheels. They suit the period of the car. They're 18 inch wheels. They look the part. I think wheels really make a big part of yeah. the car. It looks good on the car and we got big old meats on it. Can't run this type of car with little skinny boys. No. Even these tires are a little skinny for this car though. We got 295 4018s on the back and we got 255 4018s on the front. Even that for a thousand horsepower is not enough. All right, so when we got this car, obviously it was a test vehicle. That means a lot of people just threw a lot of junk in here, went to get lunch and all that other stuff. So the interior wasn't super ratty, but it wasn't in the greatest condition. It was also gray. Yeah, it was basically a completely stock gray third gen Camaro interior. Yeah. We weren't big fans of the gray, and it also clashed with the red and the black theme we have going on the exterior. So we are big fans of all black interiors. So that's what we did here. We modernized it with some retro modern seats from yep. Recaro. We ended up doing a custom dash that is controlled by a computer. And the dash also, we can put any type of gauges we want. It's a digital dash. We could put our own artwork on it, which made it a great piece. And then we had this big old clunky center council that we didn't mm, like. That's so right. Alex drew up a center council. On, on ah, please, please don't underplay it. Come on. I went in CAD. 3D modeled it from scratch, made a beautiful center console out of aluminum, and we even have carbon fiber bits there to really make it pop. We continued the carbon fiber in the door panels. We took the, the complete door panels off and just made a flat sheet of carbon using the top trim. Because you still need door handles inside. Yes. So we kind of went on to the only thing we borrowed from the, you know, the Euro guys is the little pull handles in the side. So we took some Hoonigan keychains and made pull handles for the inside door panels. A beautiful touch. To kind of keep going on our retro interior, we had the seat belts redone. All black interior and we still had gray seat belts. So I sent it over to a friend of mine over in Connecticut and he took the stock seat belts, undid the whole thing and put these nice red ones in here. Also, when you look at the engine, it's super clean. One of the ways we accomplished that, there's no power steering pump, there's no lines, none of that. No. It's an electric power steering. So what we did is we got a, a steering column and an electric motor and then we joined the electric motor to the steering column. So this is electric power steering that's assisted in the column and that's not on right. the rack. Yeah, so you don't have to see any power steering stuff. There's no hydraulic fluid. That's mm -hmm. a huge failure point on a lot of cars. Cut out the entire hydraulic system. So we just have a nice, simple, power-assisted steering off of the steering column. But you know what, Sylvie? How did we forget this? The pedals. How did we forget this? This was an automatic car before. This yeah. had an automatic. <laughs> yeah, we forgot the big, yeah, we forgot <laughs> this that. This was huge. It was originally an automatic. Automatic cars, obviously, two pedals. Gas pedal, brake pedals. But we didn't want the old, big old master cylinder, no. the big old brake booster to distract from our engine. So what Alex built, a set of pedals from scratch. I made this pedal box, of course, 3D. 3D modeled it in CAD, cut it all out on the plasma cutter, built pedals from scratch. So we got three pedals on the car now, clutch, brake, gas. So the only thing that you see on, from the outside are the three master cylinders on the yes. firewall. With stainless steel brake lines. Yes. Cause you don't, I mean, you're doing all this work. You don't want to just use soft lines all over the place, bend them the right way, use the stainless hard lines.
and not to pat ourselves on the back, but we we kind of pulled it off, right? Yeah, yeah. The team really came together. Soupy, myself, Jameson, Tony, Daniel. We did a great job. The car worked the car, really well, the, actually. It went to SEMA as a working car. Yeah. It came back working. So I think the idea for this car now is not it's not going to get shelved. We're going to use this car. We're going to bring it to this versus that. Mm. We're going to take it on tour. Yep. Maybe some burnyard stuff. Yeah, we'll, see. we'll see. When it has a real body kit, <laughs> then we'll do that. Next week, we have an S2000. I'm a big Honda fan, but this car, yeah, you'll see.